Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is a podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and it is Tuesday, which must mean we have an interview. And it is true, as I said at the end of the last episode. I am speaking today with author Joseph Reed about his Seth Walker series. There are currently two books in this series. The first is called Take Off. The second is called False Horizon. That one just came out a couple of weeks ago. And if these sound like something that you're interested in, they're um, they're thrillers, not like not creepy, just action-y <laughs> thrillers, then I do have uh, copies of the each of the books to give away. So stay tuned to the end of this episode to find out how to win a copy of either Take Off or False Horizon by Joseph Reed. Let me give you the description of Take Off since it's the first in the series. Still reeling from a devastating personal tragedy, Air Marshal turned investigator Seth Walker embarks on his first case. All he has to do is accompany female pop star Max Magic to Los Angeles and deliver her to the FBI. But when their routine flight ends in a hail of gunfire at LAX, Walker has no choice but to take the frightened diva on the run. After a second attack leaves him battered and bloody, Walker realizes he cannot trust the FBI. To keep his client alive, he must use a patchwork of trusted aviation contacts to get her home to Austin, where the key suspects await. But as they race to stay one step ahead of their deadly pursuers, the biggest danger of all may be what they're heading toward, the dark secrets that Max herself has been keeping. So there you go. That is the description of um, Take Off by Joseph Reed. As I said, it is a thriller. It is packed full of adventure and um, action. As you can tell, I mean, it's supposed to be a routine trip flying from uh, New York to Los Angeles, but it ends in a... (laughs) I mean, really a hail of gunfire and it just, it goes from there. There is so much crazy action in this book. Uh, It's definitely a page turner. I I, I never, nope, I wouldn't have survived this situation. (laughs) Certainly I don't have the training that Seth does, but even as, as a Max Magic, the, you know, the teenager who doesn't have any training either. No, I wouldn't have survived. I would have just curled up in a, in a ball somewhere (laughs) and said whatever uh well maybe not i don't know what would happen if my adrenaline was running but uh it's it's a lot of fun is fun the right word i mean it's it's a really good book it's really great and um action filled it's definitely a page turner i enjoyed it and it it was a quick read because of the action so that is take off by joseph reed and let's go ahead and turn it to that interview with joseph so he can talk more about take off as well as the second book false horizon hi joseph welcome to the podcast thank you so much for having me uh it is wonderful to have you and i'm excited to talk about your books we're going to talk about a series today before we get to the books though if you could just start by sharing a little bit about yourself that would be great Sure. My name is Joseph Reed. Uh, By day, I am a patent lawyer and a patent litigator. So I I litigate high stakes uh, technical cases for big companies and inventors. And then uh, I've been writing books for about 15 years. My first one got published last year in 2018. That's one of the ones we're going to talk about today. And it's called the Seth Walker series, and it's about an air marshal. And uh, the second one just came out a couple of weeks ago, so I'm I'm excited to talk through them with you. Yeah. Um, So as you said, it's the Seth Walker series, and the first one is called Take Off. So if you could give us a quick overview of that first novel. Sure. Uh, Take Off is Seth Walker's first mission as uh, essentially an airborne investigator. He's been an air marshal. And for reasons uh, that become uh, reasons that are explained later in the book, 
uh, he's lost his covert status. So he's been assigned this new job of uh, working with law enforcement if they need an air marshal's help. And so his first mission is he's assigned to babysit this teenage pop singer on a flight from New York's JFK airport across to Los Angeles LAX. And it should be a routine flight, but when they get there, uh, a mysterious band of gunmen uh, greet them at baggage claim and shoot up baggage claim and send Seth and the girl on the run. And so he's got to uh, protect her from these mysterious gunmen and try and figure out why she's being targeted and who might want to kill her. Yeah, and nobody is giving any straight answers in that one. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your inspiration for that story? So, you know, I had done uh, a few different, uh, I'd played with a few different ideas for both series and protagonists. And eventually, uh, you know, so many authors focus on their hometown, where they're from. You know, John Sanford writes about Minnesota and the Twin Cities, and he does such a good job of capturing the essence of that location. Uh, I'm a Navy brat, and so I've moved all over the place. Uh, and then with my job, I travel a lot. Uh, and so as I started thinking about where I could set books, uh, the the most obvious setting, the place I knew best, was on airplanes and in airports. And so I started thinking about aviation and all the different uh, situations that you might see involving aviation in crime fiction. And that's kind of how the idea of using an air marshal like Seth came about. Okay. And let's talk a little bit more about Seth as the protagonist. Um, what about him do you think might resonate with your readers? Well, he is um, he is very, very smart. He's got a, a long history that well, we sort of – a backstory that we delve into a little bit in Takeoff and a little bit more in the sequel, False Horizon, that we'll talk about later. Uh, he used to be an electrical engineer, uh, so he built and designed circuits. And so he looks at the world in this very, very technical way, and he sees the world in a way that uh, a lot of the people that I work with in my day-to-day -day job, um, uh, that, that's how they see the world, through the, the lens of technology. And so, you know, he's he's in this new job. He's out to do the right thing. Uh, but he does have a bit of a tortured backstory, and uh, you learn a little bit more about why he's why he's stuck uh, doing this new investigative job, and and why he would have left his dream job in the electronics industry behind to come do this. So, I think he's he's sort of your prototypical hero. He he doesn't want to be there. It's not by choice. Um, but he's facing these odds and he's trying to do the right thing and, uh, you know, save everybody um, when, you know, he might not be the, the best prepared and the best equipped person to do it. Right. Right. And another interesting thing that I found about Seth is that he has um, a fairly unique brain condition. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that and, and why you decided to make that part of his character? Sure. So, he has a condition where essentially uh, lots of people, I'm sure your listeners m may have experienced where uh, if they're listening to music or they have the TV on in the background while they're working, uh, they may feel like it actually distracts a part of their brain and helps them focus. Uh, scientists have looked at that and they've figured out that there's actually a neurochemical uh, explanation for that. Uh, when you listen to music or or when you listen to something, certain chemicals are released in your brain uh, that actually help your brain focus. Uh, I've sort of, with Seth, have, have put that into overdrive. Seth always needs to be listening to a, a steady stream of content in his ear, uh, and he's got a special earpiece that he wears all the time. Uh, otherwise, if he doesn't, uh, his brain can sort of spiral off into a million directions and leave him uh, sort of a quivering, helpless puddle on the floor. And so uh, in terms of why I did that, uh, it, it's really a couple of things. First off, uh, like I said, he's, he's super smart, and, and I knew that I needed to 
have an explanation for why he can absorb material and how he gets access to material so often and so frequently. And so uh, the idea of, of pumping information directly into his brain through this, um, through this earpiece uh, is a helpful explanation for that. Um, it's also a great, uh, as an author, it's a great device where I can have him get up to speed on any technology I need him to learn about without having to have him, you know, sort of go off for a week and read about it. Uh, I can have him do it through osmosis in the background and get up to speed rather quickly. And in a, in a thriller, you kind of need that. And then finally, uh, you know, the, the consequences of the condition where, uh, you know, he can be, he can be neutralized if, if he doesn't have this stream of information coming in. You know, that's a real weakness for him. It's, it's something that exposes him, um, and something that, uh, you know, can cause problems for him as the, as the ad adventures unfold. And so, uh, that was the other sort of reason to do it from a, from a writer perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am actually a little bit envious of how he can just pump information into his brain and retain it. <laughs> I think, I oh, think I am great. too. No, it's, it's a great device. It really is. Yeah, I think it'd be great for all the books that I read for interviews. <laughs> I just need to figure out how to do it. Just jumping in here over my dorky self because we do have to take our first break of the podcast. Um, and I do realize that there is a way to listen to the books that I do for the interviews. It's called an audio book. I, I do know that. Um, please don't send me messages telling me I'm an idiot. Uh, I can be, certainly. But um, I love reading the books for the podcast. Don't think I'm trying to get out of that at any rate. We are going to take that first break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking some about the research that Joseph did for this series. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Podcast. I am speaking today with author Joseph Reed about his Seth Walker series. We've been talking about the novels and the settings for the first two novels. We're going to talk now a little bit about the research that he did for these books. What kinds of research then did you do for the book? Uh, for Takeoff, it, it was a variety of things. Um, it, it was my first Seth Walker book, and so I, I did have to dig into... Uh, some of the air marshal stuff and and also some of the electronic stuff uh, to give his his background um, some some heft. Uh, the when they go on the run, it's basically a mad dash across the American Southwest, and so uh, it starts in Los Angeles and it ends up in Texas. And so I knew some of those points along the way, but uh, I needed to do some location research and things like that. And then there's some other you know, sort of contemporary issues that come out in the book. Um, there's uh, some gangs. Uh, obviously, there's this mysterious gang that's targeting him. Uh, and so there's some, some historical research and some uh, cultural research that went into uh, to those aspects of the book. Um, so, you know, any, any different aspect of the book um, has been, you know, sort of the, it is the product of a bunch of research and is all roughly true to life. I mean, I've, I've made up some things here or there, but uh, my books tend to be pretty accurate in terms of the technology being real, uh, the backstory being real, or at least being plausible. Uh, and, and that's the hope, at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you've talked a little bit about your own life, but are there, are, are there autobiographical elements within the series? A little bit. 
so like I said, I'm an, I'm a Navy brat and, and I made Seth a Navy brat. Uh, and so issues of sort of identity and location and where you're quote unquote from, uh, are, are in the book. And, and those are things that, you know, I've certainly thought about, you know, growing up and, and traveling the way I did. Uh, there are autobiographical elements in the sense that it, it's things I've been around and been exposed to. I'm, I'm not an engineer, but I work with lots of engineers. Uh, I didn't work in the electronics industry, but a lot of my cases are focused around the electronics industry. So um, I've certainly taken from settings and people and experiences uh, I've witnessed firsthand and bake that into the book, even if it's not necessarily my firsthand experience. Mm -hmm. And as a patent lawyer, are, are you as um, if one of your clients came to you, like Seth comes to uh, his patent lawyer in the first book, would you be able to do all the things that he does? <laughs> um, I can do all the legal things um, <laughs> that, his, that his patent lawyer does. Uh, I, I probably uh, would not be as well armed. Uh, or as as helpful on those aspects of the of the adventure as his patent lawyer is. I was, I was very impressed with how thorough his patent lawyer is. Um, <laughs> so, uh, for, by way of explanation, his his best friend is named Shen. Uh, that's his patent lawyer because Seth is an as is an inventor, and Shen has a military background himself. And so uh, at various points in the books, when when Seth needs some assistance, that's someone he can call on. And and Shen is able to help not only as a as a lawyer, but also as a, uh, as a second gunman or a, uh, a ride along partner for when he needs one. Yes. Thank you for that. Um, so let's let's go ahead and move on to the second book, which is called False Horizon. And can you give us a an overview of that without, you know, giving any spoilers from the first one? <laughs> sure, sure. So uh, False Horizon is the second Seth Walker adventure. It's set a few weeks after the uh, the events of Takeoff. And essentially, uh, the book opens with a mysterious plane crash. Uh, a commuter flight has gone down in rural West Virginia, and no one knows why. Uh, the FBI and the government has been called in to investigate the crash. And Seth, uh, because of his performance uh, in the takeoff adventure, uh, gets called cross-country to go assist with the investigation. And there's there's lots of suspects and a very mysterious uh, sort of geography to poke through as they try and figure out why this plane might have gone down. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so how was writing this book different for you from writing the first? Uh, great question. I'm writing the second book in a series, I think for anybody is, uh, for any writer is a lot different. Um, you're on deadline. And so uh, you don't have, uh, you know, limitless time and resources to get it done. Uh, by the same token, you have to make it a standalone story where new readers can come and pick it up uh, without having to have read the first one. But you want to, I think, uh, pay off certain aspects of the first book so that uh, returning readers don't feel like uh, reading the first one was worthless or, or that nothing ever changes. So. So that balance between making it a a standalone story, but also uh, an episode in the the overall series, I think was was probably the biggest difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And do you feel like uh, it is only a couple of weeks after the first one? But do you feel like Seth has changed at all as a character from the first book? I think so. I hope so. Uh, you know, the the first one, he's very unsure of himself. He really, the, he's gotten dropped into this adventure uh, completely unknowingly and, and doesn't know how he's going to perform. Um, the fact that he survives and, and the fact of uh, you know, all, all the events that happen in Takeoff, I think, make him a more confident, uh, more active participant in the investigation in the second book. 
uh, and hopefully he's he's a more effective investigator um, because of his experiences in the first one. Mm -hmm. And this is a series. So do you have a, a plan for how many books you'd like to see in the series? Or are you just kind of going to write until you and Seth don't have anything to say anymore? <laughs> Uh, it's a little bit of both. When I when I first came up with the character, uh, I did sort of plot out an overall arc and story for him um, that would take about seven books to tell. Uh, and obviously the, the beauty of him as a character and the beauty of the setting around aviation, I think, is that uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, adventures we could see in between those main stories. Um, you know, I'll certainly write Seth as, as much as they let me. Uh, I'm under contract for the third book, which will come out uh, next year in 2020. Uh, and so we'll certainly, we'll, we'll just have to see where it goes from there. But um, there's going to be at least three installments. I know that. Jumping in here again so we can take our second break of the podcast. I'm not sure if Seth can survive more than three installments of this series. He tends to get himself into some pretty crazy scrapes, but um, fortunately he's fiction. So he can handle it. <laughs> At any rate, we are going to take that second break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking about what is next in that third installment. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion to my interview with Joseph Reed about his Seth Walker series. And um, what is next for Seth? So the next book is called Departure. Uh, like I said, it'll come out next year. I'm in the middle of writing it right now. And really, Departure is... Um, uh, perhaps the most uh, personal of the stories that we will have seen about Seth so far. Um, as I mentioned, he's got a, a bit of a tortured backstory, and there's some mysteries about his background. And so Departure uh, gets into more of those um, and in ways that we haven't seen before. And so hopefully, uh, you know, people who've uh, read the series and been wondering um, or have questions about certain things, uh, a lot of those questions will hopefully get answered in Departure. Okay. I, I was one of those people who had questions um, because <laughs> it, it feels like there's a first book that you that I kind of missed when I was reading through it. I'm like, is there going to be a prequel? Uh, <laughs> I, kept, I kept looking on your website. Did I miss the first book? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Takeoff, uh, takeoff starts um, with a bang, I think, um, with a gunfight. And, and I do sort of parse out the fact that, you know, he's been assigned this investigative role because of something that happened. Um, I haven't told that story yet. Uh, I do know what that story is and I do have that story in mind. And so, um, if other readers and the publisher like you want me to tell that story, I, I would be more than happy to. Okay. Well, I put my vote in for yes. I don't have any authority, <laughs> but I vote yes. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, you said you've been writing for about 15 years. So um, is it something that you'd always wanted to do, writing fiction? 
Not really. Uh, you know, I my plan was always to be a research marine biologist. I I grew up loving sharks, and I was going to be a shark scientist. Oh, that's right. And you so mentioned that in your what, in your bio. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's what I started out doing. Uh, that's what I went to college for, and then I started my PhD in grad school. After that, um, it ended up that there were not as many jobs in science at the time that I came out. Um, perhaps as as there were before, or maybe there are now. And so uh, I looked around, and I had to change careers, and that's why I went and and became a lawyer. Uh, writing was always adjacent to everything I did. I, you know, I wrote a bunch of articles when I was a scientist. Uh, I wrote articles when I was a law student. I write a lot of briefs and things now as a lawyer. Um, writing fiction was not a, a, ever something that I'd held out as uh, a real career option. I mean, I think I'd I'd sort of come out of the uh, the the science and engineering field feeling like that was you know, those were quote unquote real jobs. Um, but you know, I was a voracious reader. I loved reading fiction. And so, yeah, about 15 years ago, uh, I was on a trip and I, I was devouring books like I usually do when I'm on vacation. And I, I got an idea for one myself. And I thought, well, geez, maybe maybe I actually could do this. Maybe it'd be fun and maybe I could give it a try. So uh, I came back from the vacation and I sat down and, and I started writing. And that was, um, there were a bunch of failed attempts. And there, there's certainly a bunch of books that I wrote that, that haven't seen the light of day and probably won't ever see the light of day. Uh, but um, but it was it was a lot of fun. It was a wonderful experience, and and I really enjoy the craft of it. Uh, and, and that's that's sort of what's kept it going over the uh, over the length of time I've been doing it. Mm -hmm. So, out of your your journey to becoming a published author, do you have advice for aspiring authors? Uh, you know, persistence is obviously a, a big one. Um, this is a this is a job that has a lot of rejection. Uh, it has a lot of odds stacked against you because so few books get published, and it's so hard. It feels like it's so hard to get an agent and get a publisher and and get your book out there. Um, I think the the most successful people I know that I've seen um, are, are the ones who really stuck with it, um, who really enjoy it as a craft. And so all of the success of it is sort of secondary. I mean, it's it's wonderful when you when you hear from readers and, and your books out in the world. Um, that's really really gratifying. But even if my books didn't get out in the world, I, I think at least um, based on based on my experience, I, I'd still be getting up every morning and doing this every day um, because I like it so much. It's uh, they're books that I would like to read. Um, and I have a lot of fun writing them, and, and hopefully that comes across to the readers. Mm -hmm. And as you were talking about that, um, how, how do you balance then you, – know, you have a full-time job as a patent lawyer. How do you balance your writing with your with your job? Yeah, it's tricky sometimes. Uh, my general schedule is I get up at 4 in the morning every mm -hmm. day, and that's my writing time when everyone else is sleeping. So. Um, I start writing at about four. I write until about seven or eight every morning. Um, and then I have to sort of help get my kids off to school and, and get ready for the day. Uh, and then I turn into a lawyer and I'm a, I'm a lawyer the rest of the day and, and into the evening if I need to be. Uh, but basically that, that's kind of how I do, how I do the balancing. Okay. Thank you. And you said you're a voracious reader. Do you have favorite authors or genres that you like to read? Oh, a million of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> I read I read a lot in this genre. I mean, I, I chose this genre basically because it's what I read the most, you know, mysteries and thrillers. Um, and so it, it's uh, it, it's my favorite. It's near and dear to my heart. Um, you know, I grew up, uh, really loving, uh, because I was a science person, really loving books that involve technology. So, you know, I, I did a little, I dabbled in some sci-fi like Isaac Asimov, but I was also in love with writers like Michael Crichton and Tom Clancy, um, you know, the sort of the quote unquote techno thrillers back in the eighties when I was a kid. 
uh, you know, ever since then, I, you know, I've, I've branched off and, and dabbled in a bunch more authors. Um, Frederick Forsyth is a huge hero. His book, Day of the Jackal, is one of my all-time favorites and one that I go back to uh, time and again to sort of remind myself, um, I think, of what, what a thriller should be. Um, same thing with Sanford's Rules of Prey, uh, the very first Lucas Davenport book. Um, that was a, a big one that really sort of inspired me to think, well, geez, maybe I could do this. And, and if you did, how, how do you do it? Um, what, what's the, what's the reader sort of expecting from the author? Um, but now the, the, the best part of being a published author is, is really you get to meet these people, um, and experience them and, and then see their work firsthand as, as it comes out. So, um, you know, there, there's a bunch of great folks, you know, working now, everybody from, uh, you know, Robert Dagoni, who's with my publisher, uh, James Rollins, um, uh, my wife and I are big fans of his. Uh, so there's just, you know, it's, it's a lot, lot of fun. Nice. And yeah, the, the getting to meet the, the people that you've been reading for so long must be awesome. Yeah, it is. It is. And, and frankly, I have to say, um, Coming to this sort of community of writers, it is an incredibly supportive, generous, um, friendly community. I was, uh, I was very, very pleasantly surprised when uh, I was on a debut panel at Thriller Fest, you know, with uh, like 20 or 25 other authors. Uh, you know, we all became very fast friends. Um, you know, we've all read each other's books. Uh, and we're out there, you know, not only sort of, um, you know, selling our own books, but really promoting each other because ev everyone is so talented that makes it at this level. Um, and, and they're all just really good people at the same time. You really want to see everybody else succeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's wonderful. I know that you have a website. So can you uh, tell us where where to find the website and where people can find you on social media? Mm -hmm. Sure. My website is Joseph Reed Books. My last name is R E I D. So josephreadbooks.com. And then on almost every platform, uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, I am Joseph Reed Books. On Facebook, I am Joseph Reed Books One. Uh, but that's the only the only platform that's even slightly different. But if if you can remember Joseph Reed books, you can find me almost anywhere, either my website or any of the social media platforms. Also, I know you didn't plan this, but I love that your last name is Reed, but not spelled like Reed. Um, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm an no, nerd, my but whole it's okay. family is full of. Yeah, my whole family is full of readers, and and my kids have never hesitated to point out the uh, the irony of Reed being our last name. Yes. Yes, yes, that's awesome. Um, we've talked about uh, the series and writing. Is there anything though that we haven't touched on that you would like for people to know about your books or writing? Um, I think probably uh, one of the questions I get because I do have a lot of travel and I have a lot of technology in my books. I think those are sort of the two features that, that uh, are consistent from book to book to book. Um, you know, I get questions about whether I've actually been to these places and I get questions about uh, whether the technology in the books is, is real or not. Um, and the answer to both is, is generally yes. Uh, you know, for example, uh, False Horizon is set in West Virginia, um, sort of a, a unique setting for a thriller that, you know, most thrillers happen in, in big cities. Um, this is happening out in the countryside. Uh, so I spent a bunch of time in West Virginia, both, both in my personal life and then also researching the book, going to the places that, um, that, that the book takes place. And then all of the technology in the books it is true to life. Uh, some of it is bloody edge type stuff where it's things that are being developed um, and are really, really at the earliest stages of development. But just about everything in my books, if, if you pick them up, is is realistic in the sense that it either could happen today um, or it could very easily happen tomorrow. So um, uh, I would hope people would um, would take that sort of realism away from uh, from this and and go into it knowing that what they're seeing is is pretty true to life. Okay, 
Thank you so much. And thank you uh, again for taking the time out of your day to talk to me about your series, your, the Seth Walker series. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you again to Joseph for taking the time to come and talk to me about this series. It was a lot of fun to read and it was a lot of fun to chat with him about it. So if you are interested in reading either Takeoff or um, False Horizon, you are in luck because as I said, we do have a couple of copies to give away. Just go to our social media pages, GSMC Book Review, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and comment on this post. This is episode... um, excuse me, comment on this episode, the post with this episode. I can speak. Yeah. Um, Comment on GSMC Book Review Podcast, Episode 170, Interview with Joseph Reed, and you will be entered to win a copy of one of the Seth Walker novels. So as always, please do like the post, you know, um, follow us on social media, do all that good stuff that that helps us out. But if you're interested in a copy of one of these two novels, then just comment on the post episode 170 interview with Joseph Reed, and you'll be entered to win a copy. As always, thank you for listening to the GSMC book review podcast. Hope you're having a great week. We'll, uh, we'll talk again on Friday when we'll be talking about uh, some books that I've been uh, listening to for middle grade readers. So, so tune in to that. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun with those. Uh, in the meantime, hope you have a great week and hope that week provides you some time to get lost in a good book. Talk to you on Friday. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from Move to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program